In this video, I want to show you guys how we can use custom layouts as well as custom adapters and still use the list views choice modes. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to start off with our custom layouts. So what I'm going to do over here in our array adapter is instead of passing in the Android R layout simple list item multiple choice, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a layout file of our own. And in this case, it's simply going to be r.layout.listItem and uh, main, or list item customer, how about? Now, of course, that particular layout file doesn't exist yet, but we can go ahead, place our keyboard cursor in the middle of that red, hit Alt Enter, and select Create Layout Resource File. So we'll hit Enter, and we'll go ahead and we'll leave it as a linear layout. A linear layout is a, is a good thing to do with, uh, or to put together list view items with. Now what I'm gonna do here is, I guess I can go ahead and do horizontal. Actually, in all honesty, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set the height to wrap content. It's pretty much gonna be simple. It's just gonna be a text view. So this text view is gonna have a width of wrap content, height of wrap content, and we'll get a padding of 6 TP, and we'll give it an ID of new ID, list item, customer, and we'll say name, name, that's fine. Okay, pretty straightforward, not super exciting. In fact, I could have just used the text view itself as the whole layout, but I wanted to uh, give my text view an ID and have that be picked up by the array adapter. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, on the third parameter, we're gonna pass in that ID of that list view. So I'm gonna say r dot ID uh, customer name. And again, if you guys don't, uh, if you don't know much about array adapters, of course, check out the video one for when we dealt with list views initially. Okay, so now that I have that, we can go ahead and hit play. And what's gonna be interesting is the code will still relatively work, but as you can see, see, watch how I can select these items and notice how the selection code still works, but we get no visual feedback for what item is selected. So what I want to do here is I want to write some code. In fact, it's going to be an interesting thing. It's, a, it's going to be a, a drawable, which is kind of fun to write, in XML that will change the background color of our list items if it's selected or not. And so this is an excuse to show you guys how we can write draw, uh, drawables that are have different states to them, different shapes and different values depending on the condition of that particular view. So what I'm going to do is jumping back into list item customer for the linear layout, I'm going to say background equals drawable. So at drawable forward slash, and I'm going to say list item customer. Now, of course, this drawable doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to hit alt enter and I'm going to select create drawable resource file list item customer. So I'll hit enter. And this will just leave the defaults. Uh, directory name is drawable, and we're not going to put any qualifiers on it. So we'll just hit enter. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, like I said, I want the background of my list view, list item, to change whether or not the item is selected. So what I just created was a resource under the drawable resources. And it's not what you typically see in a drawable folder. It's not a, a image a PNG or a JPEG or, or whatever image you might have, it is an XML file that's describing the drawable in code. And what's cool about this is if we use a selector node, we can write multiple different XML based drawables in the same spot. In fact, we could we could use the, the, the selector to hook up multiple different background images as well, like other image files. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create two states for our selector. So I'll create the states first before I fill them in. So I'm gonna say item, and I'm gonna say Android state pressed true, and we'll keep that empty for now. And then I'm gonna say item Android, or I'm just gonna say item in this case, and state activated is true. And then finally, I'll just say item. So what's going on here? Well, now we have three states. We have the state where the list view item is being pressed. 
the state where the list view item is checked, in this case activated, and then finally the last item, which is when the list view is uh, item is in normal uh, conditions. So it isn't either pressed nor activated. Now the interesting way that the 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 selector engine works is it'll go from top to bottom and select the first drawable resource that matches the current condition of the list view item. So let's start with uh, state press. So what do we fill in here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in, uh, instead of uh, referencing another image or another drawable, I'm going to stick a, a, an actual drawable described in XML right in here. It's kind of this weird sort of uh, SVGE type thing that Android gives us that allows us to do basic things like rounded corners and, and other sort of things. I'm going to keep it simple and open up a shape. You read more about this on the documentation. And I'm going to give it a solid um, of color. And the color I'm going to use is, uh, how about E0F7, uh, F7, FA. So that's a, a really light color I got off the material design guidelines. So then for our state activated, I'm going to say shape, if I can spell it, solid color. And then for this guy's color, so this is the color, the background color is going to be used when the item has been checked. And it's going to be D1C4E9. And then finally, for our just general case, I'm going to say shape solid. And I'm going to give it a color of, um, let's say, uh, e, 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 e. So a really light gray color. And uh, of course, I forgot to put a hash symbol in front of that. All right. So that is our layout. Now let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. Or not our layout, I'm so used to uh, the layouts being the only XML that we write. That is our drawable, our selector drawable that changes based on the condition of the item. And now we can see, so check that out. Now I can click on these items and, and notice what happens when I hold the mouse button down. So when I hold the mouse button down, notice how it gets the pressed state. And then when I release, it switches over into the activated state. So that's how I can customize. That's one way in which I can customize how our list view items are presented when they're selected. There's other ways of doing it if you wanted to, for example, write your own custom view. But that's a little bit out of scope. Um, by custom view, I don't mean a custom layout XML file. I mean an actual custom view class that derives from view somehow. Yeah, that uh, that's, that's out of scope because you can accomplish most everything you need by dealing with a custom adapter. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that as an excuse to show you guys a interesting way that we can make drawables based on the condition of the view itself. So that's really cool. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and write code that will allow me to deal with this whole choice mode, but when using a custom adapter. So I want to use a custom customer adapter, and I want him to deal with not only this, the choice modes, because whether or not it's a custom adapter won't change what we're seeing right here, right? because that's, this is just an artifact of how the view is presented. So we'll still get our nice little background color. But I want to do something different here. I want to throw in an additional, uh, let's say an additional animation, for example. Like let's say we wanted to slide the item over to the right if it's selected. So do something a little bit different because this shows you guys a, a significantly more complex example because now the whole idea of a list view item being selected is no longer being controlled by the list view itself. Instead, we have to manage how those views get presented using our custom adapters. So if you want to do use the selection modes in addition to a custom adapter, you're going to have to deal with some complexity. And, and that's what I want to show you guys. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, well, I'm going to create a custom adapter. That's going to be the first step. But before I do that, I'm just going to nuke all this code. I'm going to nuke all the code all the way up except for when we get our list view. So we'll grab a reference to our list view and perhaps we'll come in here. We'll, we'll also say list view dot set, um, uh, set choice mode to list view dot choice mode multiple. So 
We'll get our list view and we'll set it to multiple. Otherwise, I just removed all that code we, because it'll be easier to write it back in instead of just modifying bits and pieces. So let's start off by creating our own adapter. I'm not going to bother doing this in its own file. I'm going to say private class customer adapter. And in this case, I am going to inherit from array adapter of customer. So this is going to be an interesting thing. Like I said in, in a couple videos back, how I was talking about creating custom adapters, what we can do is we can build our adapters based off the other simpler adapters. In this case, I'm going to save a lot of code by inheriting from array adapter. So inside of array, so what we have to do now is because array adapter does not have a parameterless constructor, we have to create a constructor on our customer adapter and we have to invoke from this constructor one of the super constructors. So one of these needs to be invoked. And the, what I'm going to do is going to be the first one. I'm going to, for the context, I'm going to pass in main activity dot this. Not main activity dot class, but main activity dot this, which is how we re get a reference to the parent object that instantiated the inner class. And then for the layout resource, I'm going to pass in r dot layout, and we're going to do list item customer. So basically, our customer adapter doesn't need any parameters for its constructor because we have basically all the parameters hard coded right there, since the customer adapter is specific to dealing with customers. Okay, so now what we got to do is we got to re-implement our get view method. So to implement our get view method, the first thing I'm going to do is create my view holder. So I'm going to say private class view holder, not view holder, view holder, with a public text view, and I'm going to call this name text view. Now that I have my view holder class made, I'm going to go ahead and so to do this really quickly, by the way, uh, to, to create an overload of a method from the super class, it's very easy to do with IntelliJ. We simply hit Alt Insert, start typing in override mem uh, methods, and we have that right there, so we can hit Enter, and then start typing in the method you want to override. In this case, it's going to be get view. And get view is right there, and we'll hit Enter. And then for the code inside of it, we are not going to be invoking the base the, uh, the the super method for this. We are simply going to be replacing it with our own implementation of git view. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say view holder, view holder, and then I'm going to do pretty much pretty standard stuff. So convert if convert view is null, then convert view equals git layout inflator, which is comes convenient because this is an inner class. Inflate r dot layout dot activity um, or whoops list item customer. And of course, we also have to pass in the parent as well as false. Then we're going to instantiate our view holder. So I'm going to say view holder equals new view holder. And I'm going to say view holder dot name text view equals cast to text view convert view dot find view by ID r dot ID customer name. Then what we can do is we can say convert view set tag view holder. And we're done. So for the else here, so if convert view has already been instantiated, we can simply extract our view holder. So this is just an example of the view holder pattern. We covered this in a, a, a couple videos ago, if you are interested in that. So we can say uh, convert view dot get tag. Okay, so now we have our view holder. Now we can do we can extract our customer for this position, and I'm going to say customer uh, customer equals and in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say get item position. So that'll get the current customer that we're rendering. And then I can say view holder dot name text view set text customer dot get name. So here, we'll, here is where we would do all our custom view stuff. So if you wanted to hook up an image, if you wanted to set up a event handler, if you wanted to do any crazy thing, custom thing that you can think of, this is the line or the lines of code that you would do that here. This is what gives you the massive amount of flexibility that uh, is writing your own um, adapter. Then I'm going to say return convert view. I'm not going to write our, our selection code just yet. So that's our customer adapter, really straightforward, not a whole lot of code. That's pretty much the bare minimum code that you're going to get when writing your own custom adapter. So I'm going to scroll up to our onCreate method and hook up our new customer adapter to our list view. So I'm going to start off by instantiating our customer adapter.
After I instantiate it, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with items. I'm going to say for int i equals zero, i smaller than 100, i plus plus. And we'll say adapter dot add new customer, customer, and then plus integer get, or sorry, two string i. And then finally, we finish this off by saying list view dot set adapter adapter. So that's it. That's the minimum amount of code for dealing with a really, really basic custom adapter. So we'll hit play. And what's interesting is you'll notice not a whole lot changed. It looks pretty much the exact same. We have our awesome background drawable selector thingy. We can scroll down and we can scroll up and our view holder is properly getting populated. But you'll notice, yeah, pretty much no difference. So what I want to do now is I want to introduce the functionality, an example of functionality that makes this more flexible. So you might be saying, well, you just, well, you just wrote a whole bunch more code and it does the same thing, but we can now do something a little bit more flexible. What I want to do here is I want to have it to where when I select one of these items, it fly, the, the, the item itself floats over to the right a little bit uh, in an animation. In fact, we can do an animation. That'll be fun. So what I'm going to do is, at the top of the class, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say that, because that's a syntax error. I'm going to play it, say, private, static, and in this case, float, and I'll say, trans or selected item transition, or trans translation x equals, let's say, 100. So we'll, we'll, when we select an item, we want it to move 100 items to the right. And when we deselect an item, we want to move it back to where its original position is. So to do that, I'm going to, on my onCreate method, I'm going to add a event handler to my list view for the individual items when they're clicked. And when they're clicked, that also means they're checked or unchecked. It means that the check status changed and they'll be slid to the right or to the left, depending on. So let's write that code. I'm going to say list view dot set item or set uh, on oh, whoa. set on item click listener on click listener. I was I'm used to it being in a particular part of the autocomplete window, and I was like, I can't find it. What happened? Okay, we got that all working. So now we have this method that's invoked whenever an item is clicked. So for here, what I need to do is I want to take this view. See this view parameter? This view parameter is the list item view, and I want to go ahead and animate it. Seems like a reasonable thing to do here. And in this case, I want to animate it based on if it's selected. So I'm going to say float translation x. Then I'm going to say if list view dot is item checked. In this case, I'm passed in position. If it's checked, then set translation x to selected item translation x. Otherwise, set translation x to zero. Now I made this, I expanded this code just to make it a little bit more readable. This is a prime candidate for usage of the ternary operator. Anyway, now that we know what we, how we want to translate the list, I can go ahead and say, or the list item, I can say view dot animate and we'll say X. So we want to do a translation X and we're going to set that to translation X. And then we'll say set duration, let's do 500 milliseconds, or let's do 250 milliseconds. And then let's say start. All right, so now we see that our item will be floated to the right when it's checked and floated to the left when it's unchecked. But there's gonna be a non-obvious problem. If you guys can spot the problem, then that means your training of list views is complete. If you guys can figure out what is going to go wrong here, because I really like this example because it really underscores one of the biggest things about dealing with your own customer, customer, custom list view adapters. All right, so let's click on one of these items and check that out. It animates. It animates and the background changes. That's really cool, right? So let's, let's open up a couple of these. So you might be saying, wow, that works. All right, it's time to uh, you know let's let's ship it right. Let's let's go ahead and send this on to update all of whoever has installed your application, and because it obviously works, right? Well, watch what happens when I scroll down. <laughs> what? See what? Uh, some of these items are translated to the right. 
So as you can see, and it's almost random even. In fact, I can probably affect which one of these items are... are um, uh, this is a hint to the problem, by the way. I can probably affect which one of these items are indented and which aren't by the speed in which I scroll. Now, if I scroll all the way to the top, it, now it's even more broken. Look at that. Some of those items are selected. Some are moved to the right and some aren't. So what is going on here? Why is that failing? Why is that such a difficult bug to spot? The answer to that question is something you are going to have to do every time you write a custom adapter is our views are being recycled, right? As you can see... Those views down here, inside of our get view method, our convert view is being recycled. So as I scroll, items that have been translated to the right are being recycled for items that aren't selected. So it's all just breaking. So yes, we animate the item temporarily, but when it gets recycled, it's no longer attached to that particular list view item. So what we have to do now is come over here to our get view method, and if the view already exists. So if the view already exists, if the if the view has been recycled, which means there's, an, there's a potential that it's been indented or unindented, then I wanna go ahead and I wanna reset the indentation of that item based on if it's selected or not. So to do that, I'm gonna do this in two steps. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say convert view dot stop animate, or sorry, clear animation. So convert view dot clear animation. That's in case the which is very very unlikely, but possible that the animation that we told it to do is to to scoot over to the right. Maybe that's still going on when that view gets recycled. Well, that will throw really make really weird things happen. So we want to go ahead and make sure to clear that animation if the view is being recycled. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um if if list view or sorry. If the item, if the current item is checked, which in order to get that information requires that I come up here to my list view object, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna promote it to a field. Instead of a local variable in my onCreate method, I'm gonna turn it to a field. I can do that very simply by right-clicking, selecting refactor, and my refactor menu is so tall that it hop, popped up off screen, but you'll see a extract option and open that up and select Extract Field. You could also hit Control-Alt-F. And then I'm going to keep the name as List View, and I'll hit Enter. And of course, really all that did was is it inserted a line of code up here, up in our, as a field, up here in our main activity, and it removed the type declaration of that local variable. All right, so now that our list view is a field, we can access it from within our customer adapter. So inside of our get view method, I can go ahead and jump all the way down to where the convert view is being checked to see if it's null. And by the way, I totally got that backwards. I hope you guys caught that. <laughs> I, I, no, no, I, I'm, I'm testing you guys. I did that on purpose. Uh, I did get that backwards. The Boolean logic is difficult. I meant to clear the animation if the convert view is not null. And then what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to say if list view dot is checked, passing in position. If it's checked, say convert view dot set translation x, and we're going to say selected item translation x. Otherwise, convert view set translation x to zero. And so now I can go ahead and hit play, and we'll have our awesome. Not only do we have a custom view, we have a custom layout, we also have a custom adapter, and we have custom selection logic, which is really cool, how we have that cool little animation there. And now when I scroll down, notice how the recycled views are indeed not selected as they should be, they're not indented. But when I scroll back up, those items that I previously selected now indeed are pushed over to the right. So yeah. Again, this gives you really the ultimate flexibility when dealing with your list views, custom adapters and custom layouts. But of course, there's there's complexity that comes with that. And you definitely have to keep a very, very close eye on how those views are recycled. If you don't, you'll run into very, very difficult to find bugs. But, um, but yeah, I think that pretty much wraps this video up. And we'll see you guys in the next one.